Grant, grant was a force back then. You could go and get a grant. Today, you can't find a grant. So, Chairman, if you find a grant today, then you really have to use a... You have, you have to use a magnifying glass to find it. You get very small grants these days. Very small grants. If you're lucky, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, if you're lucky, you get a small, small grant. And that's after using a big magnifying glass to find it. The fact is that today, governments, governments like ours don't have a chance with a grant. There's no opportunity for grants in government in St. Kitts and Nevis. So you have to go with loans. You have to go with debt. Uh, Mr. Speaker, will you tell the member for number six to stop? Mr. Speaker, will you tell the member for number six to stop disrupting me, please? <laughs> but, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, Contrary to what it might appear, I'm not a comedian. <laughs> I'm very, very serious about this. The terms and conditions, the environment has changed so dramatically in 15 years that I don't even know why we bother in to talk about 15 years ago. I wish that my friends on the other side will understand this. I wish, Mr. Speaker, that they will understand that this VAT bill debate is in need of accurate information and constructive proposals. Proposals which will help to meet the fiscal challenges and the macroeconomic imperatives that confront us as a government and as a country. I said before, Mr. Speaker, and I say it again. Let them say what they want about me. This is not the time for electioneering. Elections done. Let us talk about moving forward as a nation. In the final analysis, there were some glimmers of hope in the presentations from the opposition when I thought that they were proposing ways in which this bill can best meet the need to raise government revenue without stifling economic growth potential. But then they would quickly revert back. Within seconds of going down that road, they will go back to the old culture of politics at a time when it's not needed. Mr. Speaker, at the end of this debate, we need to have exhausted all ways in which we can fairly implement this new tax regime while still protecting the most vulnerable and needy in our society. Auntie Jean and myself had that discussion over lunch. We mustn't forget that, Mr. Speaker. The bill must result in the tax net spreading as wide as possible. And we have no apologies about that. That's one of the objectives of the VAT, to spread the net as wide as possible. But we must spread that net without stifling productivity and consumer spending, especially in the fledgling economic sectors of tourism and post-sugar agriculture. We have to continue to do what we can to facilitate improved innovativeness and productivity in those sectors, and all sectors that we want to grow. We have to collect as much money as we can to do government's business. We must do government's business efficiently. We must do government's business in targeted ways to get to the groups of people to the individual uh, businesses and enterprises that need help. To the communities 
that need specific projects and infrastructure. And we must be very selective in how we go about doing that because we will never have enough money to do all the things that everybody wants. Mr. Speaker, if this government is guilty about anything, is that this government tries to do everything for everybody. Yes. Take a look at where our debt has gone, Mr. Speaker. Yes. And let me say, you know, Mr. Speaker, contrary to what has been peddled on the opposite benches, this government is not about taxation, you know. I was trying to remind the Prime Minister, the Honorable Prime Minister, the Honorable Member for number six, sorry, that since I have been in this cabinet and had the privilege to be in this honorable house, I do not remember, I have to say I don't remember because I didn't do the research as thoroughly as I should. I do not remember, Mr. Speaker, one new tax being introduced in this honorable parliament since I have been here. And that is a fact. I've been here from 2005. Yes, that is a fact. Actually, from November 2004. And I have sat through several budget debates. I have sat in dozens of cabinet meetings. And as much as we have flirted from time to time, <laughs> as much as we have flirted from time to time with some new taxes, Mr. Speaker, I do not remember a new tax in five years. So this government has, in spite of this attack that was leveled at us about deficit, if deficit determined the success of a country, the USA would be dead. If deficit determined the life of a country, the USA would be dead. Now deficit is important. We never said not. But what is equally important is how you spend that deficit. How you invest the resources of this country. Of human development. Mr. Speaker, for as long as I can remember, every election, the People's Action Movement said the government thief. Lord, the tired talk about the member for number six. Everything, every election is a different slogan about corruption and all that. But none of them could say, none of them could point to any, any kind of clandestine or, or you know, on the table activity where government money has gone and hasn't gone to benefit the people. They cannot say that the money that government has spent has not benefited the people. And Mr. Speaker, I have a comprehensive list here of where government debt has gone. It's going to take me all afternoon because it's such a, you know, it's a big debt. We have never hide, hidden that. Mind you, they say it's 3 billion. We say it's 1.6 billion. So I don't know where they get their figures from. The other thing, you know, Mr. Speaker, is that back then, when they talk about how small the debt was back then, the debt back then didn't used to consider Nevis debt, it didn't used to consider the debt for the public corporation itself. When we speak to debt today, we cover everything. Yeah, they used to cover something else. And Mr. Speaker... What? SSMC? Anyway, Mr. Speaker... You go ahead, you go ahead. Let me just run through quickly some of the things that this government has spent money on. You see, I don't need to do this, Mr. Speaker, you know. Because we just finished doing this six months ago. The people put the member for number six and his team back into office because they were happy with the way the money was being spent. Because they could feel the benefits. They could feel the benefits. Well. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I, I, I really am reluctant to do this because some of these things are so well known. No, you have to do it. Thirty million dollars for resurfacing the, the resurface in the island main road. Yes, do it. Next one. Next one. Fifty million dollars worth of water development. Do it. Yes. Especially in Kaon. Especially in Kaon and St. Peter's. Yes. 